The last two weeks have been really, really, really busy. A week prior, I played Castles and Crusades, followed by DMing Dungeons and Dragons. This last weekend, I started with the Dungeons and Dragons, then played Castles and Crusades. We're not talking about the Castles and Crusades. We're talking Dungeons and Dragons. And maybe a little Pathfinder in there, too. So this is the story of a soon-to-be deliciously slaughtered meat shield, a horny bard, and a noob wizard. My name is Patrick Murray, and this is my campaign diary. Okay, I didn't mean to roll, but... Campaign diary! our heroes, Hetfield von Ulrich, the human bard, and Alina Rakus, the ha the elf uh, wizard, they had joined a fighter by the name of Dontar, who was taking them on a mission to go recover a dragon egg. After an initial meeting with a kobold, some kobolds, and getting singed by a statue, and then finding a spider... We left for the night because we just ran out of time because a certain buddy of mine couldn't be bothered to get things going on time. What the shit? So after slaughtering that spider, they proceeded north to find a pillar. This pillar had arcane writing. Now our wizard, Arcanist, of course, had to try to translate it. However, Alina's dice were not with her. They haven't tried to kill her yet. Instead... She failed that, and it came down to the bard who had no arcane, who did not have proficiency in arcane. He managed to translate it and got the map. This map is something that I found online, which is based off the map from Pathfinder's beginner box, Blackfang's Dungeon, which is literally the dungeon they are running through. But since I was well, not running Pathfinder in D&D, I tweaked it around for my own little purposes. Because that's one of the advantages of DMing. You can take anything from anywhere and adapt, revise, adjust, and fix it to make it do what you want it to do. If you have an ancient temple and they go cave diving, instead, suddenly their cave leads into an ancient temple or something. Or some kind of structure that's still the map that you were going to use. You just put the map somewhere else in your world. Rather than, you must go to this temple or you do not get anything. Bad! 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 So, with an actual map of their area in their heads... The party continued north and encountered a pool of water. The least athletic of them, Alina, decided to go swimming and try to get across. So she dove in, forgetting, of course, she had a racial feat we got out of Xanathar's guide that gave her Misty Step once per short rest. She proceeded across, and my pool had some quippers in. Luckily, I st scaled them down just a little bit so they wouldn't insta-kill her, being that she only has seven hit points. So the quippers attack, and I roll! Yeah, snake eyes, folks. That's what I rolled. So she easily made it to the island and found the thing that... and found, in this case, a few bolts that are capable of killing dragons. I wonder why those are there. Oh, because I have a bard who has a hand crossbow that can shoot those to kill a dragon. Also, there's a potion of water walking. Of course, they didn't figure this out till after she misty stepped back across. I kind of had to hint the word, use the word feet an unholy number of times until they said, wait a minute, you have a feet that will fix that. So after a short rest, the party proceeded westward where they came upon a room they had heard earlier. In this room, they encounter a mad little kobold who's talking to some skeletons and making them dance. After being treated to the beauty of Michael Jackson's thriller, yes, my bard likes to play music constantly, the party manages to sneak up successfully without the crazy kobold. One bolt later, he's dead and the skeletons attack. Our resident meat shield goes in for the attack, he smacks one to pieces. The other two fall rather quickly. Here I found a little thing called the wizard, a wizarding hat, which basically is a party city style wizard's hat. You know, conical, 
blue with moons and stars and shit on it. That kind of the most dorkiest looking hat in the world. But you can use it as spell casting focused and you can use it to try to cast a cantrip once a day that you don't know. So that's a cool little gift that doesn't really do much, but it's still a magic item. So yay. They proceeded north from there to find a ladder climbing up to an area where there are some kobolds sleeping. Three rolls later, with no ones to prove that they could not actually stab something, they slaughter three kobolds in their sleep because apparently we're getting murder hobo -y. Or it's a good idea to slaughter kobolds in their sleep so they don't go off and alert the guys that they're going to next. So they come upon the big final chamber where you know there's going to be a dragon. If you didn't figure that out by now, yeah, there's going to be a dragon. A little wormling dragon. A little, little bit of wormling dragon. What they come up across first is an altar and four kobolds. Two are chanting some prayers and two are standing aside guarding, all fairly close together. In, after initiative, my bard, who has exactly one spell, Hetfield, drops down, starts blasting the ACDC classic Thunderstruck, which is basically means he's casting Thunder Wave. He rolls well. The kobolds who have five hit points, it doesn't matter what he, I roll because he rolls 20 points, which means they explode. All of them. They're dead. So my entire encounter, which wasn't a complete surprise because my meat shield finally rolled badly, blown. So I keep them in initiative just long enough for the wizard to go up and see what's going on, just in time to have a black dragon jump out and bite at her. He misses. Immediately, the party starts attacking. The bard drops two of those three bolts that he got into this dragon. The fighter goes in and hacks him very easily. The wizard misses pitifully and sadly, and I get to laugh. Dragon does get off its acid breath once, but only managed to drop my fighter to 20 hit points, which I forgot exactly how much I rolled, so I just gave it 20 hit points, dropped him down to 20 of his 30-some hit points. And the bard, he was he managed to dodge fairly well, so he took half damage. I rolled crappy too, so that didn't help. So with, the dragon got two attacks off before it was dead. The problem was, I had expected this counter to be a little bit longer, so then my bad guy could come in after. But with the rushed nature and the fact that they already had the gold I'd left for them to find, I brought my um, villain in, the big bad, a villain by the name of Gizu Kirrzel. He's a dragonborn warlock, and he is vastly more powerful than the player characters. He could pretty much slaughter them without even trying. As the dragon falls, he gives out a roar of rage, and this is where things kind of went odd. I blast them. And to correct an earlier point, this is what drops my fighter down to 20 hit points. Everybody else manages to avoid the Eldritch Blast. So everybody else has got full hit points. And my fighter is down to 20 hit points at this point. This is where I really have fun with the party. Because immediately after my wizard missed her second spell in a row trying to hit somebody, she rolled crappy. So the beautiful witch bolt she was going to hit missed both the little dragon and this guy, leaving her out of spells. Then I drop this in front of them. If you didn't know, that this dragon is a little bit bigger than the wormling they faced earlier. The initiative cards, because I use index cards to track my initiative, for when this guy and the big bad I didn't put any stats or any attacks down. I just put the word run on it. Because I knew initially my guy was going to, my big bad was going to come down and have a little conversation with them and then bring the big dragon in to scare the shit out of them. Needless to say, they ran. Nice lineup, but since I figured that my fighter had been pulling this before, the dragon targeted him. Before this, though, they noticed that this guy had a scepter. This dragonborn warlock had a scepter, and he pointed at the fighter and said, Kill. This scepter is actually the relic that I talked about earlier. The very thing that ultimately my party is going to want to get from him, because it controls dragons. Where have I seen that in a shitty Dragons of the Dragons movie? Naturally, they run. My dragon fires out his acid breath and targets the fighter. I didn't even roll the fighter's save. I rolled 40 damage exactly. Even if he'd saved, that put him to zero. Wouldn't have killed him outright, 
but the party's running like hell. Also, I named the fighter Don Tar and styled him after a certain asshat who happens to be running this country. Um, since none of the players of the party really like that president of the United States, they kind of left him and ran like hell. And that's where we left the adventure after they took a rest, knowing that they'd have to get back to town and try not to get bathed and asked by a dragon, which thankfully didn't follow them because things got narrow from there and they got out of sight of them. Because, let's be honest, if I send an adult black dragon after the party, they're dead. They don't even have a chance of living. The average roll would kill both of them instantly, considering my bard had 10 hit points, my wizard had 7. The acid damage alone um, was 12d6. Half of that uh, would be in the neighborhood of 36 damage. 36 damage would insta-kill both characters. And if they rolled for half, they were still dead instantly. Because if you don't know the rules well enough, if you take damage that exceeds your hit point, maximum hit point total, after you go to zero, you're just dead. Gone! So it was experience points and waffles. Although I decided not to waste time trying to figure out experience here, and just am going to milestone. Since this is a level one party, I did give them a stat boost, to one to all of their stats, and one feat at first level, which is how my wizard could Misty Step. This is, of course, to compensate for the fact that if I don't boost them up, they're going to die really quickly. With a two-player game, you have to be careful because if the par half the party goes down, it that's one person. So you have to make some allowances to try to not kill your characters too easy. You can, ma you can make them encounters deadly, but you need to make sure, especially early on, that you build a way out and you caution your players that, yes, they can die quickly. After explaining this whole thing, it became clear that you don't want to mess with dragons. So, next time we will be picking up level 2. I have no idea where they're going quite yet, although if they get back to the village, I think I'm going to have to plan a little more than originally what I was going to do. Either way, it's going to be a fun adventure, and I will see you next time, where we will play some more Dungeons & Dragons, and I will explain it to you.